This morning, I heard a very messy case. In this country, one out of seven married couples say they have considered divorce after seeing something about their spouse on social media. That's true of the couple who brought in their case today. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Antoinette McCreary and Stoney McCreary, the two of you have been married for about two and a half years. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You have seven kids together, though, correct? <laughs> yes, ma'am. But yeah. you, you do twins, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, there's a couple of sets of twins in yes, there. Yes, ma'am. But you have nine all together. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how you get up in the morning. I'm just saying. I'm going to start. You, you don't want to be married, miss, anymore. Mrs. McCreary, you say mm -hmm. your husband will sleep with anything that walks by. Yes. Why don't you tell me what uh, he's doing? Um, he is constantly on social media. Um, he has slept with relatives of mine. He has slept with relatives of other people that I am associated with. He has had girlfriends within the marriage. Um, Pretty so an much. active, a long-time girlfriend while he was married to you. He, he called himself getting into a relationship while we were married. Like, it wasn't like he had her before we met. It was... He got her after he, he had yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Now, he, Mr. McCreary, you're looking pretty bad over here. <laughs> I'm going to give you an opportunity to redeem yourself. Is everything Mrs. McCreary telling me true? Yes. <laughs> You get an A plus for 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 honesty over there, Mr. McCreary. Yeah. Now I got a question for you. You got a lady over here. Yeah. And you got what, at the time, five six kids with her. Yeah. So you've been with her for a while. Yeah. And then one day you look at her and say, you know what, baby, we we've created an entire baseball team here. Why don't we get married? <laughs> And then, you, and then you go somewhere, you put a ring on her finger, and you say, I will keep all, only unto you until death do you part. Why did you make that commitment if, in fact, you were going to behave like it never happened? Uh, when we first got married, we used to go out and everything, but we got married, and she didn't want to do nothing no more but go to this bingo. You know, like, I don't want to... Bingo? Yeah, bingo. Well, how often does she go to bingo? What? Every night. What do you mean? Not do true. Do you go to bingo no. every night? No. What? No, I go, like, probably every other night. Okay. <laughs> I don't go every uh, night. Every night? Come on, now. You might he don't say... have a problem when I, when I win, and if I come back with some money, he don't have a problem with that. If I don't go to the club. I don't party. I don't do none of that stuff. You just go so to bingo. So I go to bingo. It's like something that me and my family been doing before I even he came in the picture. So that's like I vent and relax at bingo. Like, I, do. I got a lot of kids. Yeah, and, and that's, that was my next question. Because I had two, <laughs> and I never got out the house. How do you manage to get to bingo every other night when you've got nine? nine two I'm of watching them. them. Is he watching them every night? He, not every night, he don't. Sometimes I got to pay a babysitter. But listen, I go to bingo, but it's nothing compared to him staying gone overnight. So when I go and be gone for a couple hours at bingo, that's nothing like... Him well, what does he do? When he goes out, he stays out all night? Yeah, he'll stay out all night. He doesn't stay gone for a month before. Like, a whole month. How you go from being with Dewan, going over there to go kick it with your brother, and then you turn around and don't come back home? Is you that don't Dewan call me? over yes, there? Yes, that is Dewan over there. Dewan, how you doing? I'm doing good. You want to come up here for a second? Like, he'll leave with him, and they'll be go he'll be gone for, like, he'll turn his phone off. Are you two related? Yeah, this is my brother. <laughs> That's your brother? Yeah. yeah. Ratchets, uh, ratchets. Your, your, your brother wanders a bit, even though he's married. You admit to that? I wouldn't call it wandering. I'm just saying, get out the house. He wandered, too. <laughs> and I don't get him in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. What do you see when you see their marriage? Um, and, and forget that he's your brother for a while. Uh, Who's making the biggest mess? I say she is. Oh, wow. Because... And why is she making the biggest mess? Because she really don't spend time, and she always want to go to bingo. And when my brother want to go out, she don't want to go out half of the time. He embarrassed do, do you ever go out with him when he's with some of his other women? Don't lie. Be honest. All right, here and there sometimes. <laughs> here and there, you go out with him and him other, his other women, and you're going to talk about her going to bingo. But look, it's... <laughs> look, 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 look. Right, Go right. on, sit down. Look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Mr. McCreary, one of your main complaints about Mrs. McCreary is that she runs through a lot of money. She can't handle cash. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Well, tell me about that. What does she do with the money? She spends the money at bingo like $500 a night. Like, how, how, how can you afford $500? Got nine kids at home. You this don't spend $500 you know, a night at bingo, do you? No, I don't. Probably Just two. I, I might spend $200 at bingo. Be Look, honest. Listen, I'm telling you, I, I like, if I do my buy-in, and then, like, I'll probably spend, like, So $200. how much does it cost to buy in? $31. $31. How do you end up losing $200? Actually, how much is the pool tabs? tabs? How many pool tabs What is buying? a pool tab? It's like a, quick, it's like a little quick game that pay out like $500 or $1,199 and stuff. But he don't have a problem when I win that and bring that back. He got his hand out. So him talking about bingo, you coming home That's from laying up with these rats and you ain't bringing back nothing. <laughs> At least when I go out for them couple hours, I come back with something. I don't care if I come back in with $10 in my pocket. You go and lay with these street walkers and you bring it back nothing. Are you working? Yes. That, is he working? Here and there. But, like, I bring back more than what he talking about I spend. Like, if I win, I done brought back $1,500 before from going to bingo, and all I spent was $50 mm -hmm. and took my last. But all in all, wouldn't you say that bingo got more of your money than probably, you got from bingo? Probably, probably. It probably has. Most like, likely. And aren't you a little bit concerned that you got all those mouths to feed that are going to need all of well, those clothes and shoes and underwear and books? And let's not even <laughs> talk about the possibility of sending one of them suckers to community college. Don't you ever worry about that? But I, my kids are taken care of. They taken care of. And then I know if I go to bingo, I know that their dad got them. So... When he leaves for them couple days and one, weeks and months and stuff, and I finally do get to go to bingo, I'm going to go. You going to be there with them kids. Because I've been there with the kids. You disappear for that month, I'm going to be gone for them hours. You can call my phone, text my phone, be mad all you want to. Me being gone for them couple hours is nothing compared money, to nothing what he's doing. Mr. McCreary, your response to that is what? Look, look, it's nothing compared to when you, when you chilling in, you chilling in, say you, I'm chilling in the house, I'm with my kids. You All jealous. of a sudden, I, I tell him, go get your mama. My mommy not here. She went to bingo. <laughs> what you mean she went to bingo? She didn't tell me nothing. You don't communicate with me nothing. You just go to this place and go just spin, right? So it's just like, it's just overwhelming. And then I'm with the kids all day. They don't, they don't want to listen to me. They really don't listen to her. I ain't going to listen to nothing she say. Okay, well, let's switch gears here and talk about the kids for a moment. So why did, did you bring your girlfriend <laughs> to your party at, with your wife on the grill? She said she didn't want to come. I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. You said that the kids don't listen to you or her. No, that's not what I'm saying. They listen to me, but they don't listen to her. Why don't they listen to her? They don't listen to her because she don't put no authority. No authority, like no type of foot down or nothing. She doesn't discipline no. them, anything. It, Ms. 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 McCreary, do you let do you let the baseball team run wild? Yes. No. <laughs> yes, she does. No, not all the time. When you have to talk to your kids every day, the same thing. Well, I run the same program every day. You don't follow the program. They always look like, okay, my, I have so many kids that if one asks for candy, they all gonna want the candy. You know what right. I'm saying? And I say the one, I say no to one. I gotta say no one, no to the other one. So one mess up. They see the other one, oh, he not getting in trouble, so I'm about to do what I'm about to do. So I got to handle it. I got to nip everything at the butt. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And sometimes I do be too overwhelmed, and I will scream at my kids, but it's not like I never showed them love. You know what mm. I'm saying? Gotcha. I got you. I understand it. I'm, let, let, I'm, I'm the disciplinary discipline. person in... Yeah. And sometimes one is harder to discipline the other. My husband was harder than me. I got to say this. If you got that many kids in the house, you got to get structure. You got to get structure early, quick, and hard. Do you know what I'm the you, th There got to be rules. There got to be this is yes and this is no, and you got to have that. And they stop. You know what I mean? If, if, if they run, they figure out they can run you at all, they'll run you over. Yeah, they try. They try to, but that's where he come in. Mm -hmm. he come but in. you've got to establish that authority as I well. I don't want my kids you, to be scared of me. It, 
you, they don't have to be scared of you, they just have to respect you. There's a difference. There's a difference. Now, Mr. McCreary, you say Mrs. McCreary has an outrageous temper. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Look. Look. So mad. I want to burn up the clothes. You see me? I'm going to wear this. I can't put well, this on Well, you weren't in it at the time, were you? Huh? Yeah. Huh? You yes. weren't in it at the time, were no, you? No, I wasn't. Oh, look. Oh, man. Yeah. I could have been asleep. I could have been asleep with that now, on. Now, now, Ms. McCreary, what caused you to burn up those clothes? The barbecue uh, happened the day of his birthday party. Um, he asked me, was I coming to his birthday party? I told him, no, I wasn't going to come. I was pregnant, and I was already upset with him. And I'm like, OK, it's my husband. I'm still going to go to his birthday party. I go to his birthday party. It's a little yellow rat following him all around the party. And a I... yellow rat? Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, are we describing a certain type of woman? Yes, a nasty ratchet woman. A nasty and... ratchet woman? Yes. <laughs> I, she, she following him around the party all night. I pull him to the side. I'm like, he asked me what I'm doing there. I'm like, I came, like, I came, it's your birthday. Who is she? Why is she following you? Oh, that's nobody. Don't worry about it. Just, just be cool. Then I go to talk to him again. She's standing on the side, smiling. I'm like, who, the, who is this? It's nobody. I'm like, OK, I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let you enjoy your birthday party. Find out later on that night, it's his girlfriend. <laughs> So why did, did you bring your girlfriend <laughs> to your party at, with your wife on the grill? She said she didn't want to come. I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> I asked her. No, look, this is the situation. I asked her, was she going to come? She said no. Kept saying no. Wanted to be mad. I'm like, all right, then why, why you don't want to come? She just said, I just don't want to come. All right, don't come then. Got it. Wasn't supposed to be at the party, point blank. Exactly. I wasn't supposed to be there, so he it's had so his little... It's my birthday. What you mean? I hear you. It's so wrong in so many ways, I can't even begin to address it. So we're going to move on. <laughs> did you wear out the car with the skillet and a knife? Yes, I did. You got that kind of spare cash? Do you believe that Antoinette, a woman with nine children, should be able to go to bingo every other night? Vote now. Call 855-70-DIVORCE. Make your vote count. Call 855-70-DIVORCE and get your exclusive offers. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Sometimes I have to sit here and wonder what to say next, but you guys have so much going on. It's like a cornucopia of crazy, and I have so much to choose from. I don't quite know where to go, so I'm going to own in on a word that caught my attention that somebody else had to explain to me. It was brought to mind by you said, what was the yellow girl? A yellow rat. A yellow rat? You said you've always wanted to be with a red bone. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? You said that. I never said that when Did I said Did you that. say that? He said that. He said he that. He only said... What is a red bone? <laughs> a light-skinned and mixed girl. <laughs> a light-skinned and mixed girl, but the girl was a bruised bone. She was no longer a red bone after that party. She got my whole party shut down. Bruised <laughs> bone. Don't, don't admit to any felony okay, assaults in here, OK? Let's, okay. Let, 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 let's, let's let that okay. go. Do, do, do you have a certain hue of women that you like? Do you, you, you know what I'm saying? A certain, certain... What, my type certain or something? Color. You yeah. trying to say you, my you type? You got certain colors that you, you prefer? Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Lighter than the paper bag, it's okay? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, my. Mm. Now, I understand that Mr. McCreary, though you burn clothes, he tears up cars. Mm hmm Yes, And I understand that you have a witness to the yes, fact that she did, in fact, uh, destroy your car. Yes, ma'am. And her name is Danielle Hill. Danielle, how are you? Hi, are you? I'm good. I'm Judge Lynn Toller. I'm here in divorce court with your friend, Aunt Antoinette McCreary. Yes. She said you saw Stoney tear up her car. Yes. <laughs> Tell me exactly what you saw. Um, well, we were, you know, at her house chilling or whatever, and they had already been into it already. They were, I guess, going through it. And 
I came over there to chill with her, have some drinks, and Stoney came walking up. I guess he was gone for a couple hours or whatever. He came walking up, and he asked me where Annie is, and I told him that she walked off, and I told him I was watching the kids for him. So he proceeded to walk past me, um, go into the kitchen and get a skillet first, and he proceeded to um, bust out the windows with the skillet. And then he went into the kitchen and grabbed a knife and punched the tires, all four tires out. And the kids were home? Yes, they were in the house. Did any of them see that? No. Yeah, but they know what's going on. Uh, thank you so much, Danielle. You're the most concise, intelligent person I got to hear from throughout this entire case. I appreciate it, too. Thank you have you. a good You're day. Welcome. Did you wear out the car with the skillet and a knife? Yes, I did. You got that kind of spare cash? Mm -mm. Nah. Why did you feel a need to tear up your own property? Be because... I mean, I know Richard Pryor shot his car, but he could afford a new one. <laughs> no, the reason why I tore up the car was because I came back and she was gone. I'm like, Where, where's Annie at? Her car is here, so where's she at? I don't know, I'm just watching the kids. I'm like, what you mean you watching my kids? Why is Annie not here watching my kids? You know what I'm saying? She always wanted to lease my kids on somebody else and it made me very mad. And that made you feel better? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I ain't about to hit her, so what I'm gonna do? Act like a grown man. Why don't you try that for a minute? <laughs> you sit down and have a conversation. Stop running after, you know, you, you know, have the yellow woman and, and, and the red bone. <laughs> you know, just get a book. Read it. <laughs> Let me tell you what, you people scare me. You're 29 and you're 24, which means you've got a whole lot of procreating years left. And it also means that you're still young and vibrant enough to continue to to, to burn things and tear up things and, and cause crazy. You know you're gonna unleash a whole generation of children who have absolutely no concept of calm, cool, or together because they're living in the house with the two of you. You're gonna have your own little army out there, none of them that are psychologically sound because they're in a house with people who are spending time at bingo, running after different hued women, burning clothes, and breaking up cars. You don't have that kind of money. You've got, you've got to save your money, you've got to save your time. you got nine kids, you don't have time for bingo. What you got time for is study time and book time and creative time so these people don't go running around the country causing chaos everywhere they go because they don't have any good role models. Good Lord, people. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I understand having a good time. I understand having a little fun. I understand I might be a little rigid and hard on education and all this, that, and the other thing, but oh, look where it got me. You two are just ripping up the fabric of the future and you think nothing of it? You think it's all okay to chase your desires and your wants, you create destruction in children everywhere you go, and then you don't have any, any sense of responsibility for what occurs after all of this nonsense has come to pass. If you're not gonna... You know, I'm rarely speechless. <laughs> Get it together, tie the tubes, cover it up, whatever you gotta do. Find a new hobby, whatever it is. But please, please stop killing tomorrow. This matter is adjourned. Here's why I'm angry. These days, we're all about our individual rights and our wants, and we have freedoms and this, that, and the other thing, and we end up wilding out like two-year-olds just because we can. Let me tell you something. If you don't learn to restrain yourself, society is going to restrain you. <laughs>